we knew this was the right time uh, to move to mid-engine. We've actually known it uh, for a while. We've been reaching the limits through C6 and through C7. Uh, we were increasingly convinced that we weren't going to be able to just keep staying the course with the front engine design. And of course, expanding the performance envelope was one challenge. We could have done that a long time ago. Zora wanted to do it. You know, he went on to do one of those experimental cars out there, screw everything else, let's just get performance, put the engine in the back, and just make it the fastest car possible. But the Corvette also has to be beautiful, functional, and attainable. Guys, I am here with Brett from Chevrolet, and he is gracious enough to give us some answers on some questions that I have. So, and can you just tell everybody what you do for uh, yeah. Chevrolet? Yep. So, name's Brett Golub. I am the Global Design Manager for Chevrolet Color and Trim. So, uh, when I started on when I started in the company in 2011, started on C6, went through C7. Um, and then right in here to C8, and I was uh, the head of our performance division in that sense, and now I now I work on it for the whole brand. Um, so globally, I work in and out with every vehicle that is a Chevrolet. It's fun. It's, a, it's an awesome, awesome job. I myself, like I said, I own a 2015 Z06, and I'm just wondering how you think this car is going to compare to that car. It's interesting. I mean, obviously this is a Stingray, so there's a slight difference in that standpoint. Um, I, I think the major difference what you're going to notice is probably the weight distribution would be the major thing that, okay. that comes into it. Obviously, moving to mid-engine, it completely shifts everything to the rear. Sure, right? Bring sure. Passing forward. Your visibility is going to be completely different, and that's going to be much more exciting. You have a lot more view to it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I think one of the other really great things that we did with this was actually where we mounted the camera. So the camera is actually on the top of the roof, so it's right level with your eyes as you're going through, so it helps eliminate a lot of the blind spots. I think the other thing from a driving standpoint, it's going to be completely different, but what is nice is it still feels like a Corvette. The sound that you're going to get, the feel that you're going to get, that raw, that pure adrenaline that we associate with, with Corvette, is still, I mean, is still there. Sweet. So as far as that rear camera goes, is that actually your rear view mirror? No, it, it, it is not, but it does okay. play into it, but yes. Okay, so you do use that as your backup camera? That's correct. Okay, yes. gotcha. Yep. So the next one is, um, do you know what the curb weight is of this car? I apologize, we haven't, we haven't really saw numbers on okay. that. I do not know what the curb Okay, is. no worries. Yep. And then as far as the aerodynamics, I know they're totally different than the C7. Right. How do they compare? Uh, Dragon now, of course, completely changed, obviously, in this sense, because you're going through it, but we're, we're receiving comparable numbers. We released our times last night from right. a 0 to 60 yep. standpoint, um, which is obviously pretty phenomenal. You're coming in at about three seconds, right? Yeah. So, you know, you asked about your comparison to a Z06, and you look at, like, what we're doing with the Stingray compared to that's it's pretty incredible. It is very incredible. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's something that we're all very grateful for and very excited about. Um, we, we do have some official documentation on what the, the air drag is and everything like that, and we can hook you up with one of our media partners to make sure that we get that pop. Sweet. Yeah. So, um, were the tires that are, well, I guess they're, they're not, yeah. were um, the first ones specifically designed, I know the 4S's really weren't, right. but were the first ones specifically designed for this Stingray? Yeah, so we have an all-season tire that's coming on this, and that was created by Michelin directly for us. Um, awesome. And it, and it's, um, I like hearing that. Yeah. That's really cool. We're very proud of what, it, what it's capable of. I think yeah. uh, many people are going to be very, very surprise and obviously enables us to use it all year round as well which sure. would be a sure. wonderful transition that's so cool man yeah this is very curious what is the reason that you guys went away from the middle quad exhaust to the separated uh, I think that like new opportunity brings a new aesthetic right sure and obviously airing and cooling plays into that yep, uh, which yep. Absolutely makes sense out. yeah but I, I think also it's all about having that dynamic visible from the background when you go and look at the rear of that you're going to see how graphic it is and how it really plays wow, up. Oh, it, it does. Yeah. It looks amazing. It's incredible. I mean, there's a lot of people that are saying, eh, 
I don't like the, you know, the separation. I've always thought it looked good. I know on the C4s they had it that way, yeah. and then when it went to C5 they changed, but yeah. I've always thought it looked good, so it didn't bother me at all. Good, we appreciate <laughs> that. I think it looks pretty beautiful myself. Yeah. So. so why not make it a clean 500 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds tour? What made GM decide to stay five horsepower away from that magic number 500? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, with the LT2 motor, it, it, it provides a phenomenal output for us. Mm -hmm. um, it gives the performance capabilities that we were looking for. I think it meets every demand that we need and what the consumer expects of it. Uh, I don't know that we have a direct reason that we we're like, oh, we're not going to do this or we're going to go okay. after that. But what we did was what was right for this car sure. and what we felt would help meet our performance needs. And clearly, with the zero to 60 time and then also what you're going to experience when you do get to drive it, I think you'll absolutely see that we've made it more than capable. Cool. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so you said you have a Z06, Z07 package. Is that accurate? What, uh, yep. what, what seat did you go with in that one? I bought it used. Okay. So I got it uh, with 3,400 miles on it. All right. Uh, it has just the normal sport seat. Okay. I really wanted the competition seats, but I wasn't going to, you know, fuss over it because it was the exact color I wanted. Right. It had all the other Everything 3LG, Z, you know, the big carbon ceramic brakes. So I just went ahead and went with it. I think that what, what's excited me about this car is we learned a lot. So I've been lucky to be on Corvette from six until now. Sweet. And, uh, so through that, you get a lot of learning as you go through oh, yeah. the process, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So what we did based off of seven was looking at you had the two seats, you had the touring, and you had the competition. Obviously, you have the touring. One of the things that some people didn't always gravitate towards is they would get the competition because it's carbon fiber, it's beautiful, it has this wonderful aesthetic to it, but they wouldn't necessarily realize how much more stiff it is and how much more... Yeah. Right? It's yep. got a much thing. Yep. So uh, behind me, you can see the three seat strategy that we're going with on this one. I do. So you have a GT1, which is our overall comfort curve, just amazing everyday driving seat. Then on the far end, we have our competition seat. Aggressive, true racing seat. To the point where like even our race teams are embracing what this thing is, right? So that's a huge statement for us. But what we have right here in the middle is the GT2, and that was a direct learning off of the C7. And what is really great about it is you have the dramatic aesthetic that we created for the competition seat so you have the carbon fiber you have the large bolsters but it's just as comfortable as the GT1. That's amazing. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I love that. I love that the two are just as comfortable as each other. One thing that I really love about that competition seat though is that it's not leather. So, this is one of my favorite things. This was actually a dramatic influence that I had on this. This is a, a baby of mine. So awesome. this version is kind of a, a unicorn. This is one of the rare versions of this seat. It is oh, okay. available in the car. But as you can see, this is what we call our performance textile. So so what, what we wanted to do with the performance textile was a few things. One of the major changes that we did within the interior of the car is you have a, a full Napa leather interior. And that is uh, beautiful soft, beautiful supple, right? But when you have extreme bolsters like this, there can occasionally be oh, yeah. some wear issues. And Napa leather, by its grain, it has, it has a much more weight to it. Sure. So a few things that we wanted to conquer was make sure that we didn't have any wear issues for our customer. And then we also wanted to reduce weight. So this version is for our track car. So there is a special track version of the vehicle that you can get that comes essentially more of a blacked out package, but then comes in with this entire uh, competition seat with the, with the performance textile fabric. And it's awesome. It lowers the weight, it grips you, it holds you in. Yes, that's so, another thing. It grips yeah. you and holds you in. Yeah, that's what I love. This is a super, super exciting piece. No matter what, when you get a competition seat, it will come with the upper bolster and the outer bolster with sure. it. But this one comes with the full path that's available on that track version. And you can option it into, you don't have to get the track pack to only get this, you can option it into a few of the other areas as well. Sweet. Yeah. And so, obviously with the Stingray, you would probably want the Z51 and then put that in there. Z51 is the capability that I, that I think you would come yeah. off of the Z06, right. right? I mean, you know, and having the Z07 package on top of that. Sure. Yes, most likely I would, I would, I would suggest you do the Z51. Okay. Great. Just a couple more questions. Yeah, absolutely. Are we going to have an official Nürburgring time anytime in the near future? That's a good question. I would say stay tuned. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Yeah. And 
And do you know what GM's goal would be for that Nurburgring team? You know, I don't think we go out and set goals necessary. Okay. I, I, I understand the question and the thought process behind it, right? But I think the reality is, is that we build our product to be a form follows function, right? And we want it to be as capable as it possibly can with what we've created for where it's at. So to put these uh, lengthy and strength goals on it may not necessarily be fair to what the project was. But I will say this, we go out of our way to make it the best performing vehicle on the planet, and we expect to make sure that that delivers to our customers. All right, one more question. All right. So I know what Mark said last, last night about keeping the engine naturally aspirated, but are there future plans for forced induction, not with superchargers, but with turbochargers? I don't know. Right now we're really honing in on what Stingray is and bringing the excitement of it. I mean, who knows what the future brings us. We're always tinkering and playing, but I think today we're here to embrace what the Stingray is and how exciting of a... Good answer. Uh, Good how answer. exciting of a... I like you, Brett. Uh, thank you. I yeah, appreciate man. that. Absolutely. I mean, this is, depending on how you want to look at it, you can say it's, it's 60 years in the work. You could say... Oh, yeah. 2005 was when we really started playing with ideas. Sure. But, I mean, we really started really going project to project in 2015. So here, we're really here to celebrate the past six years to get us to what what takes us into the future for a Corvette. Sure. Awesome, Brett. Well, it's been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. I yeah, really appreciate you. it. You guys heard it straight from the horse's mouth, and I hugely appreciate this guy from the interview. Thank, Thank you so you much, brother. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care. Yes, you as well.